Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with American Vineyard Magazine. Uh, one of the regular topics of discussion lately has been the fact that, that labor is, is really scarce and, and expensive, and so we're doing all we can in the vineyard to, to mechanize and improve the situation there. Uh, in Lodi, there's been a lot of, of work going on as far as improving uh, full mechanization through through box pruned, high wire systems, and, and there are challenges that uh, Craig addressed today and, and talked to also about how to overcome some of those uh, mechanically. Yes. Well, in Lodi, we've um, had a lot of, historically, have had a lot of uh, bilateral and, and quad vineyards. The labor is becoming too much of an issue. So the other, the other part of this equation is we've gotten fairly decent, I would say, at uh, uh, wine grape growing. And we don't want to lose the inroads we've made in quality by going to a high wire system or something that is a minimal prune or a box prune system. Uh, these systems are not uh, new by any stretch of the imagination. They've been happening for 20, 30 years. We're just taking another, a, a, a different type of look at it using a little more of the modern equipment that's available now. Uh, the, the typical box prune is about 66 inches tall. Uh, usually set in about a 10 by 7 setting depending on soils and that kind of thing but generally speaking we're sitting at about 10 by 7 and we want to try to keep this box as we prune it back to about an 8 inch square box and typically the box year after year continually gets bigger and bigger and bigger some growers are saying well we got to go back in with hand labor you got to prune it back you got to do these things so our challenge is how do we not do those things or how do we at least postpone that forever if we could or at least for a few years. So we've come up, we've zeroed in on two pieces of equipment that seem to be working well for us pruning wise, pruning wise. And one was a spagnola pruner when it's young. So when the, when the vine is rather young and spindly, the spagnola can, can, can trim the sides with its sickle bars and it can do underneath with the, the lower cuttings. But after a particular amount of time, we have to move what we call is the high-speed box pruner in and that's like a collard version where we actually can cut the box back down to eight inches uh, we're finding and maybe the story will change as the as the years go on but currently what we have found is that the lower ones shade out eventually as as it develops the lower ones shade out so we that's not been a problem so we'll run the box pruner in we cut it back every year the other thing we're doing is because we are, when you box prune like that, you're opening up a lot of pruning wounds. So our concern for you type is great. So we've been mounting a lot of uh, small poly tanks in the back with a sure flow pump, little electric pumps, and we've been spraying our rally, our, our spur shield or whatever we want at the same time as we go through. So we've been able to kind of, at this point, six or seven years into the project, we've been able to hold the vines in that box situation. We know it's going to get harder and harder to do that um, but with the box pruners we can do it um, the other issue has been on the harvesting side of things basically by the time we get done we've got a bird's nest of wood and some of the wood is most well all the wood pretty much all the wood is living but some of the wood is not okay because it's been cut a couple of times and there's a piece of wood in there so we know that harvesting is going to be an issue um, uh, the amount of wood that's going to come off our mog rates are going to go up we're very fearful of this also the fact that when you're harvesting uh, bilateral or quad, you're always concentrated on the damage to the spurs. You don't want any damage to the spurs. You don't want this. It's going to affect next year's crop. In high wire, it's not as much of a concern because it all gets boxed back anyway. So we're also afraid that some of the harvester drivers might let some damage go, which is can be normal in a situation like that. But once again, that adds to our MOG levels. So we've had to go in and develop high tonnage, separating systems that we can install on harvesters that can handle the kind of high tonnage that you typically find in the valley. Um, most MOG uh, units on harvesters are good for five, seven ton per acre, but we're hitting some 10 ton crops, 12 ton crops, and we have to be able to handle that as well. So that's been in development. The third thing that we are currently working on, and that is to be able to switch varieties or when we do get into a type of issue, let me give you an example. When a vineyard gets old, or when it's time this, this variety has fallen out of favor, we, we need to tea graft or tea bud over to something else. What we are doing on the drawing board right now for the future, 
Okay, once again, we're only six or seven years into it, and this is going to be a, the, the year 15 project. But what we're going to do, in, hopefully at that time, is we're going to be able to come into a vineyard. We're going to be able to cut the uh, main trunk of the vine. We're going to be able to cut the clip. And then we're going to actually take this bird's nest and we're going to pull it into a grinder. We're then going to go through the vineyard, grind, and shoot it out into a grape gondola. And then we're going to separate out the metal because we're going to grind the cordon with it and with all the wood with it. And now we've got a trunk, we lay out a new cordon wire, we T-bud, and we're back in business. So this is a dynamic change for us because right now with the heavy stakes and, and the, the pipe end posts and the drip we're putting in, this is a 35-year trellis system. And in some cases, you have a 20 or 25-year vine. So it's not matching up. So we think that we can actually there's a possibility of us being able to go in and redo a vineyard in the middle of it. it let's say if it, gets, if it does happen to get Utypa and our production levels get to a point where, you know what, it's time to do something about that vineyard. We go in and we cut, we do our trick, we're back in business the next year. So those are all the, the changes we're looking at. Um, it's, a, it's an incredible time to be in vineyard in Lodi right now. It really is. Very exciting. Great. Well, thank you, Craig. Stay current on, on what's going on as far as vineyard mechanization and these innovations moving into the future in American Vineyard Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.